If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be my February wrap up, which I have read so many books in February. It was such a good reading month. Some books, but some really good ones too. Actually, I finished nine books. DNF2, which, you know, I'm following through with my goal of DNFing books when I'm not enjoying them. And I'm in the middle of one. Although technically right now, I did start three other ones. So I'm definitely not in a slump right now. So let's go through the books because this month was intense. I did post four reading vlogs because I was doing one week, one shelf, which that was fun. And I also did uh, finish a couple books that weren't part of that. So let's do this. As always, I'm just gonna go in the order that I have read them. So the first one was Flowers in the Attic. I mentioned them in my wrap up last month that I had started it. I finished it. Frankly, I should have listened to all of you guys and DNF'd it. I just never started. Um, I mean, it's just one of the situations I just wanted to know. You know, I had heard a lot about it, controversy, but I had never read it. And um, <laughs> it's messed up. It's really, really messed up. Frankly, I have no intention in continuing. I didn't even know it was a series. Will not do that to myself. Uh, probably two stars. It's, it's like messed up to be messed up, you know? And I'm not going to spoil it for anyone else, but it's not necessary. I just wanted to know because when people say, oh, you know, have you read that book or you see it on the list? Now I know. Messed up. Then I read Still Alice in my contemporary week. Um, wow, that broke my heart. I can't really like detach the book from the movie because I watched it right after and I do think the movie is slightly better. It doesn't happen often, but it definitely is the case for me. The writing is kind of so-so, but it's written by... Uh, the author has a PhD in neuroscience, so she's very familiar with the topic, which is Alzheimer. This uh, university teacher develops early onset Alzheimer, and you just see her uh, progressing with the disease, and it's incredibly sad and frustrating and again do recommend the movie uh i cried like eight times watching it <laughs> like you know how i was saying how i don't cry with books but i will cry with movies you can definitely tell in that vlog so yes i'm probably gonna be giving it a four stars just because I, again i can't detach them it's still fine rating wise i just feel like it probably would have benefited a little bit from uh editing but Overall, still a great story. Do recommend it. We'll never read this again because my poor heart. The next book I finished was My Dark Vanessa, which is part of my Goodreads reading challenge. Um, there was a lot of hype behind it and I decided to go into it pretty blind and not gonna lie, another very difficult topic. Uh, it's about this six, 15, 16 year old uh, girl who is being groomed and then sexually abused by her teacher. And I can completely understand why people liked the book. I was going to say enjoy, that's probably the wrong word. Um, just because you get to see the story through the eyes of the victim and see her, you know, trying to deal with the de denial and just the abuse and trauma. So I can see the positive side of that, but frankly, I didn't like it. Um, I, again, I, I can't, yeah. There's not much else to say. It's traumatizing to read. It just is. So yes, if you are comfortable with the topic and you want to see a story through again the eyes of the victim, it's well written in that sense, but I, I probably shouldn't have read it. Now let's go with my first five-star reading of the month. Whoop whoop. Uh, this was technically our Patreon book club pick of the month, which is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I was a little nervous because it is a fantasy, adult fantasy book that is supposed to be a bit more character driven. And I have been kind of having a complicated relationship lately with fantasy books, but this was awesome. You're following three main point of views, which are actually all male characters, but I loved first off the writing style. It is different for each character, which I always love when it's the case. I just have to say Glockta is so messed up, complicated, morally great character. And I love him is like inner mom. <laughs> It's just so funny and I really care about where the story is going to go. I want a lot more about the magic system. I appreciated how there is a female character there that is very sassy and completely rejecting the F boy, we could say. I like the way it was done and just fantastic story. Very curious to see where this is going to go. It's the first book in a trilogy and I am planning on reading the whole trilogy this year should happen. The only negatives I can think of is I didn't really care about some of the side characters that you only see a couple times, so 
didn't really care about that. Yeah, that's probably my main complaint, which isn't really a big complaint. So loved it. Probably like a 4.5, but I'm rounding it up to a five stars because definitely one of the best books that I've read so far this year. Uh, in that week, I was also reading the audiobook, uh, The Once and Future Witches in the fantasy category at the same time with this one. DNF'd it just because, uh, frankly, I was bored. I had been wanting to read more stories about witches. It's a fantasy one. It is part also of my Goodreads reading challenge. It came out uh, last year and I just it just didn't sustain my interest. You're following uh, witches, three sisters, mainly uh, in the time of the suffragettes, which should have been interesting, but again, I, I was really bored. I DNF'd it about 50% and I don't even think actually I hit 50%. I just, I couldn't do it. So I decided to move on. And again, we're learning to DNF books. Third week I was doing, so for third week, it was The Rainbow Shelf. This one with books I haven't read yet. And the first book I finished was this one, which is, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini, which you're following main character. It's kind of based on the life story of the, the author who went to a, yes, the adult psychiatric wing of the hospital in Brooklyn and his story is based on that. You're following a teenage boy who ends up going there because he's being suicidal. So obviously, warning for that. I overall think it's a good why book if you are in need of something that is... It's kind of uplifting, to be honest. I know the topic is very serious, but it was kind of overall pretty uh, positive in the sense that he tries to find meaning to his life and things to focus on and anchor. Uh, in this case, it's art. I had a few issues with some of the things which I can include the quotes because I mentioned them in the vlogs and they bother me still. Uh, for example, there's the, I don't like to spend money every time I spend it, I feel like I'm being raped. Which, no, I'm, I'm just still so uncomfortable with it. And the last page, which frankly being hit by that, but the last page was just annoying. He's just listing a, a list of things to do, like uh, win, smile, laugh, Walk, skip, okay, it's gay, whatever, skip. So otherwise, it's not a terrible book. I just don't think I'm the audience for it. I think I'm reading it as I'm an adult, so too old to really enjoy it. But yeah, probably three stars, but I'm kind of annoyed by the two quotes. The next book I finished was The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers, which is the fourth book in the Wayfarer series. I love her. Um, I feel like this series is probably my least favorite by her, but I'm still wanting to read every single one just because her writing is just amazing. She always writes very character-driven, wholesome sci-fi, <laughs> which it, I will forever find it kind of a weird combo, but it just really works for her. And she uses basically aliens and humans to discuss certain topics like gender, anything that has to do with sexuality, and uh, in this case, there's a little bit of like coming of age too and belonging. And there's this <laughs> discussion. I just need to mention it again. I have to. One alien is trying to explain to a different alien how human eat cheese and what cheese is. Which was just really funny and makes you realize how weird it is. But yes, uh, overall, it's probably like a good three stars. But I just still really like it. And I'm currently actually starting another one by her. Another arc. And... I just, I just want to read every single thing she writes. So yes, I still enjoyed it, even though uh, it's only a three star, but I feel like I need to do another video on that topic. I love books that I only gave three stars to because sometimes they just have something that is really, really good. And just for whatever reason, I give them three stars. It makes sense in my head. Whew, uh, this was also part of the rainbow shelf. I had basically forgotten about this one because look how tiny it is. And it's not like a bright color, but that cover is stunning in my opinion and i believe it's considered horror the house at the bottom of a lake by josh Mallerman, who's the author of bird box and i wanted to give him another shot and i'm glad i did because this is so uncomfortable you're following two teenagers who go on a date on a lake and then they find a house at the bottom of a lake and they decide to explore it and um i was so uncomfortable with people being underwater for a while and then just weird things happening. So if you're in the mood to, you know, read something horror-y, this is it. It's very short. It's about uh, 115 pages. I didn't care for the romance. It's not super heavy, but it's there. And there are things that made me uncomfortable with that too, but I'm going to keep it vague. I'll just put it in my Goodreads 
uh, review you can click to you know see the spoilers so I don't spoil anything but and uh, yeah yeah definitely very uncomfortable I think I'm gonna give it four stars just because of how uncomfortable I was like if you're writing a horror book and you're able to make me feel this uncomfortable you're doing it right <laughs> the second book I read this one that I am giving five stars to the girl with the dragon tattoo which why did it take me so long to read it I didn't read it whenever there was a whole hype when it came out and I just never had any interest for it but I'm so glad I read it now because this is a chunky boy it's like 800 pages although I do have the paperback mass market paperback edition and I really really enjoyed it I do have to say the first hundred pages you'll have to like power through a little bit because it seems kind of heavy you're following this financial journalist <laughs> which I didn't think I was going to be into but it got super interesting ultimately you're following this man that is hired to solve a mystery a young girl disappeared years ago and 35 years ago how did i already forget um years ago and yes he has to try and figure out you know what happened who did it kind of thing in a little village i love reading books with that uh you know small town vibes and yes ended up giving it five stars love it i think it's probably a 4.5 just because I always like to include the negatives too. I feel like it's more telling than just raving about a book. But in this case, I had been warned about the sexual assault scenes, so definitely be warned. So I didn't have an issue with those. I don't feel like they were like, you know, lengthened for no reason and it didn't feel fetishized like some other books. But the main male character, <laughs> which I'm gonna keep it vague to not spoil anything, but he tends to sleep with like every female character, which always feels a bit like wish fulfillment by the author. Um, with that said, there is a whole trilogy. I will be reading the whole thing. I don't care for the romance that there is, but there were supposed to be 10 books, which I'm really sad to have learned, but the author passed away before any of his books actually were published, which is why they changed the title. I was curious because it was supposed to be called um, Men Who Hate Women, but they obviously changed it to this title, which whatever. It's probably why actually I wasn't interested because everything is called the girl and the woman, blah, blah. So it should have been men who hate women and it really works with uh everything in the messages that are in the book and yes fantastic read give it five stars i flew through this i read this book in like six days and i've been busy and super easy to go through love the writing style and will continue to read the rest of the books written by him i won't read the other ones next i also read the troop by nick cutter which is again horror i've read more horror in a month than I usually do in a whole year, I feel like. I was also very uncomfortable with this one. I did go through it as an audiobook. It's a really fast read. Like, it looks thick, it's 400 pages, but a lot of it is through um, interview styles, which obviously now I can't find any, but you can see. Essentially, you're following the story of a group of scouts who are on a little island in Canada, and um, a man shows up and he looks very, very sick, and then sickness happens i'm gonna keep it vague and yeah it was pretty messed up for sure i overall enjoyed it just because once again it made me feel uncomfortable i feel that's what i want when i read horror definitely there i do have another book by the author that i will try it's not like an all-time favorite book but i do think it had the right feel for uh again horror if that's something you enjoy you will most likely enjoy this one and i think i'm gonna give it a three point something but i'm gonna run it down to a three stars on goodreads one book that i did not finish but ultimately will attempt to outlander um so much hype behind this book i did watch the first episode of the tv show too because I wanted to see the faces of the characters because I had no idea. And I'm kind of just feeling a bit meh about it, to be honest. There's no hard feelings. There's no, like, loving it, hating it. There's definitely a lot of sex scenes already. I think I'm about 42% into it. I'm listening to it as an audiobook. I had read the first chapter physically, though. The writing style is fine. It feels very character-driven. I feel like everyone knows, but this woman is sent back. Scotland and... Let me tell you, this woman forgets her husband very fast. I'm aware that, you know, she wasn't with him for years because of the war before, but still she moves on. And Jamie, she's all about that Jamie, which also made me laugh because the whole flipping the script and she's older than him and he's all like virginal and everything, which is still weird whenever you flip it. So yeah, <laughs> I will finish it. Uh, I'm not in a rush to finish the TV show. 
I don't go through TV shows very fast, but I'll attempt to finish the audiobook. I still have access to it. So it's on my list for next month, this month, March, but mm. I don't think it's going to be a five stars, you know, but I might still end up giving it three if things go well. So as you can see, February was all over the place reading wise, but I am on the high still of this one, I think. And I'm currently, like I was saying, reading like three different ones and enjoying all three. So who has a reading slump? Definitely not me right now. For the first time, like in a while, I feel like I'm just devouring books. So I hope you are also in that kind of mood. Let me know in the comment section if you've read any of these, if you have any opinions that we can discuss what you're currently reading. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in March because I have a ton of videos coming. I'm hoping to post a couple bonus ones because uh, the last couple of months have been rough and I wasn't uploading as much as I wanted to and I have to catch up. So 